Hola a todos, hoy tenemos un gran invitado, su nombre es Steven Marr. Steven es un gran profesional en la fotografía y es especializado en la, todo lo que tiene que ver la fotografía con, de lanzamientos espaciales. Eh, Steven está trabajando con NASA Space Flight. Eh, básicamente es un, un fotógrafo muy reconocido en la zona. Y bueno, bienvenido Steven. Welcome, Hello. Steven. Hello, thank you for having me. No, uh, uh, my pleasure. It's very good to, to have you with us today. Today, yeah. um, um, well, um, alguien que me explique wants to know more about you. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, you can tell us about your life, about your professional experience. How did you end up in here in the Space Coast? Uh, where do you used to live? And uh, why this uh, launch of a war is so so passionate for you oh uh, well I, i was born at a very young age <laughs> that's a joke <laughs> of course i was born at a young age <laughs> well, <I> was... <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well see i was actually born in florida but i don't really call it like home like when i you know think about home that's tennessee um because that's um i moved there in 1998 yes that's right kids i'm an old fogey uh i graduated high school in 2001 a lot of your listeners may may not have even been born at that point uh i'm starting to meet adults that were born after i graduated so that's kind of weird um but yeah so i lived in in tennessee for about uh 20 years uh somewhere in there Um, I kind of bounced between uh, East Tennessee, like Knoxville area and Nashville. Um, I played music for a while. I used to be in bands, um, toured around a little bit, had some fun. I have some great stories. I'm not sure that they're the best kind of stories for this sort of a show. Uh -huh. But um, uh, it, it, it kind of like a lot of people that uh, used to be in bands that didn't make it. Um, It came to an end at some point, you know, where maybe, uh, well, in my case, I got kind of burned out and didn't really want to do that anymore, but I still kind of had a, a creative side, but I didn't know how, how to express that or, you know, what to do with it. Um, I never really wanted to go down the, like, I didn't go to college or anything. Like I graduated high school and I was like, I don't want any more school at all. I wanted to figure out things on my own. Um, so, so after I got out of music, um, well, I've probably spent a good year or two not really doing much, just working. And, um, and I'd gotten an iPhone back when, you know, they were new, you know, 2008, 2009. And I started to really get into photography. All I had was the iPhone, but I, I really liked taking pictures of sunsets and, you know, that sort of, you know, like a lot of people do. Um, But at the same time, my interest in space was kind of starting to grow. Um, around that time, SpaceX was just kind of getting started. NASA had given them money to develop Dragon and Falcon 9. And I can't remember what year it was, but, but one of those years, um, the Dragon made, made it to the space station for the first time. And, and that's kind of what really hooked me into space and, you know, stars and like planets and like Carl Sagan and, and, you know, who are we? What are we doing? You know, is there anybody else out there? Um, what What's the purpose of, um, of humanity, you know? And that kind of tying in with the photography thing, um, I realized that what I had, I, I couldn't take pictures of stars, you know? I, like the thing that I'm really into, you know, I, I wanted to do photography, but I couldn't really do the kind of photography I wanted, like astrophotography. Uh-huh. Um, And so I started looking into real cameras and what they were capable of. And I realized, well, that's kind of what I would need. Mm -hmm. And so kind of on a whim, like I got my tax return money one year, you know, every mm -hmm. February, March, you know, we in, here in America, we have it's tax season. And uh, most people end up getting kind of a nice check, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I took that money and spent it on some camera gear. I got a camera and then like, I don't know, like a tripod and, you know, and a couple lenses and stuff mm -hmm. and started going out just on my own time and just 
learning how to take pictures of stars and you know at the same time trying to figure out this thing called composition you know framing a photo and stuff um, but at first it was just like what kind of cool stuff can i do with this camera and um and and, and that was kind of it for a while you know on in my free time i'd go out and, and take pictures of stars or i started getting into time lapse which is you know you take take a photo every like four or five seconds and you do that for a few hours and then you take it you scrunch it together and you make a time lapse where you know time goes by really fast you got the clouds going by or the stars going by and and that was that was pretty neat to me what um, kind of camera was that ah, I, I actually still have it <laughs> it's right here this is this is my first camera right here it's a it's a canon 60b Oh, this is the this is the one that actually got it all started for me. And it's it's a decent camera. And I'll take a side note right here. And if anybody that if you're into anything, whether it's photography or or music or um, or just or like gaming, you know, computers, anything that's like technological, I highly recommend if you're really into it, start with something that's at least pretty good mm -hmm. don't get the cheapest thing available to start out because you'll find that it's not as capable as what you want you know you you want to be able to for me i wanted to take great pictures i didn't want to start with the cheapest camera that was available so i, I did some research and found out that like the canon 60d is that kind of right in the middle between the high-end pro cameras mm -hmm. that are like two grand three grand and then like the low end uh like like rebels for canon it would be rebel now i've seen a lot of great pictures taken with rebels don't get me wrong <laughs> but if you're if you're starting out you know try to find something that's kind of in the middle and like if it's if it's music you know maybe don't start with the walmart first act guitar but also don't spend thirty thousand dollars on the uh Oh, what's his name um from acdc he plays the sg the gibson sg you know like the super expensive guitar find something that's good that's high quality um i'm kind of getting off on a tangent here but um well i, yeah. I remember uh personally i, I remember a, a good experience i have with my first camera mm -hmm. my canon 80d mm -hmm. oh, about that? i have i have one of those too well yeah. uh you tell me how 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 to use it yeah so yeah, I yeah remember... which we met at the nasa social which one was it the dm2 nasa yeah. social no, the yeah. demo one it was for or, i'm sorry yeah demo one yeah uh -huh. not not demo two yeah demo one yeah so i remember i was uh I, I had my camera just for that day and it was just uh uh new it was brand new mm -hmm. and i didn't i didn't have uh the idea of how to turn it in and, <laughs> and you had a camera like that so i i saw you i said well um uh, excuse me. <laughs> and didn't and didn't you did you use it to, to did you try to do the streak shot for the launch? Is that what you did, or or did you take just like like fast pictures? Because I, I remember for that launch there was a lot of people like, how do I do this? How, you know, how do I do a streak shot? And it's like, here's a crash course. It, it's you know, it, it's like, well, you know what bulb mode is, you know, and and do you you know do you know what ISO is, and do you know what aperture is, and. Um, yeah, what what did what were you going for? I don't remember. Was it well, a streak shot? Uh, I think so. It, well, it was. Uh, I I don't even remember. Uh, you have those photos still? I I got them. I, yeah. I, I they are fresher for me. Because yeah. That was my first experience with NASA Social. Yeah. Um, my first experience with my camera, and well, I fell in love with that world too from since then. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I still having those those pictures. I'm trying to, to take more pictures about the, the launches and trying to improve my technique. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes it's a little uh, complex to to get it a is. nice a nice shot. So mm -hmm. your pictures are amazing, and all all the people talk about that. So how wonderful uh, eye you have for for those launches and and the opportunity that you give us to to see in a closer way all those launches that we are not able to see just in that 
that uh, you know that yeah. is where you are taking them so close. So it, it's wonderful. Well, thank you. That that means a lot. I, and and actually, I think I kind of missed a part with that was kind of the reason I got into photography is because like if I see something that's really neat, I want to show it to somebody. Um, it, and that's that's kind of what what led me down that road is here here's something that's really neat that you weren't here to see you know and and maybe you know you don't have access to it like in this case like i get to get really close i think the closest i've ever been to a rocket taking off yeah. was the delta four heavy uh a few months back and we were like 1.8 miles away wow it was so close and so cool yeah <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's let's continue the story. Let's yeah. So, so I so I started so I started really getting into space and uh -huh. especially the launching and you know SpaceX. Um, I think for a lot of people that are into space now, SpaceX had a lot to do with it. Um, they they were just extremely innovative they were the underdog you know they they had to fight a lot just to get into the industry and then they had this thing where they wanted to try to land the first stage booster like what you you're gonna we're gonna reuse that thing because ever since we've been launching rockets it was it goes up and then it crashes in the ocean yeah. except for the space shuttle the two side boosters did come down under parachutes and they they would reuse the shell um, I just, I don't think that it's quite the same as a rocket coming down and landing propulsively with legs coming out and, mm -hmm. and landing on, on a barge or on a, uh, people are going to get mad at me for calling it a barge, um, uh, landing on a drone ship or landing on a concrete pad, you know, like it's, there's just something special about that. And then the amount of hard work that it took to do that and, and to be watching live when they landed their first one because i i'd gotten into it right right as they started to try you know and it was it was a lot of disappointment but then when they finally did it it was just like you could hear them you know you've probably seen the videos of you know of the spacex employees just going nuts yeah, it was over crazy. that and um and so i was like this is i'm still living in tennessee and I'm like that one friend that's in into this one thing that won't stop talking about it. And, you know, I want to tell everybody about it. Like, you got to see this. This is incredible, you know. And so I you know, tell people about it. And I'd never even seen a launch, you know, even though I was born in Lakeland, Florida, which is about a mile or an hour and a half or two miles west of here. Uh, I never saw a rocket launch except for, I think maybe I saw a space shuttle from very far away, but honestly, it didn't look much different than just a plane with a big, with the contrail coming behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so for a few years, I was like, man, it would, I really wanted to get down here for a launch. Um, it's so difficult if you don't live here it's very difficult and I, I really do feel for people that that don't live here but really want to see a launch because mm -hmm. it's so hard to schedule because you just never know you, you know you might you might plan on you know being here for a few days but then that launch could get moved or whatever so i i got it in my head that i've i just had to move i had to move here and um uh, it, I got kind of lucky because uh, I was dating a girl who was also a photographer, uh, but she had a, like an actual photographer job. She worked at a portrait studio mm -hmm. and it was, they were a chain and they had locations here. They had one down in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And so she expressed interest like, Hey, you know, we're kind of thinking about moving down to that area if you ever you know need somebody. And sure enough, within like a few months, they were like, well, how do you feel about going ahead and moving down here now? And we're like, yes, <laughs> and yes. And yeah. so, so we did it. And, uh, and that's, that's how I got here. So I kind of got lucky as far as like, I had somebody that was willing to move somewhere and also her job kind of helped pay for it. Um, so I kind of got lucky there. Uh, but once we were here, you know, like, obviously, you know, I had my camera, I only had one camera at the time and would 
you know, I would shoot every launch that I could, you know, from the beach or from Titusville or, or wherever. And I was trying to learn how to do those streaks, you know, and I'd only ever seen like John Krause. He was the, oh. he was the, yeah, okay. he was the photographer. Master. <laughs> He's, yes, he is yeah. the master. Um, and he was, the, there was like him and Michael Seeley and Richard Angle, those guys I knew I knew of them, of them from uh, just from being on Reddit or being on Twitter or whatever, mm -hmm. and and I was like I I want to I want to learn how to do that, but I didn't necessarily want someone to just tell me I didn't want someone to just give me the keys I wanted to figure it out you know because I had yeah. some some experience with like long exposure you know taking pictures of stars I also had uh, some friends in Tennessee that spun poi that's. POI. Do you know what that is where you're spinning fire? You have like these little balls of fire on the end of a chain and you're spinning them around. Have uh -huh. you ever seen that? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so I would photograph them. And so I had a little bit of experience shooting something with fire. So I was like, okay, all I got to do is I got to figure out what the aperture needs to be. And I live here so I can see all the launches. So every time there's a night launch, I'm going to try a different setting until I dial it in. And then one night, bam, I got it just right. You got it. Yeah. And it, and and I say just right, it, it, there's kind of a range. And you know, there's not like one exact setting for a streak shot. It kind of depends on a few different factors, but I got something that worked. It wasn't completely overexposed where it was just a white you know, screen and it wasn't so dark you couldn't see anything. It was kind of right there in the middle. And I was like, I got this. And then, and then it just it kind of snowballed. I started buying lenses and like, okay, well now I want another camera so I can have one doing this, doing the streak, and then one actually shooting the rocket itself, you know? Um, and then of course you've got the Falcon 9 booster returns in the port. And um, and this, this is for any budding photographer that would like to get into media. Mm -hmm. um, the port is sort of like the minor leagues of rocket photography because everybody can be there um, for a Falcon 9 return or last night we had uh, the rocket ship show up uh, carrying the new Vulcan uh, mm -hmm. first stage booster and it's totally public everybody it's an even playing field you know everybody from from you know people that have been doing it for years to, down to people that are just getting started everybody has the same same layout to work with right mm -hmm. and so if you go out there and you you know you do your best you know you, you try to take an interesting shot and you know and try to edit it really good and make it make it pop make it something that people notice then you will make a name for yourself because the nice thing about it is you can't really deny a great photo in the photography world if someone takes a great photo you're like whoa that's really good yeah um and so that's kind of how i how i got started kind of got i guess got my name out there or whatever um i wanted to be media my my goal and um I'm proud to say that i uh, accomplished this goal my goal when i moved here was like i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i want to be able to set my cameras at the launch pad I didn't know anything about the media world or how you even got in. Honestly, I, I had no clue. I, I didn't know what to do, but I also knew that I wasn't good enough. So I figured, well, I'll just keep taking photos. I'm already interested in this. It's not like it's work, you know, I go to the port, take some photos of some cool rockets. Um, and I think the, the first thing that kind of helped me, I guess, get noticed would have been, um, I took the oh man, do i have it i might have it i'll try to i'll try to talk while i look um i took a photo of the octagrabber you know what the octagrabber is yeah in the uh the, in the J, jrt or obviously um yeah and yeah, let's see the one Here, that I, grabs the grabs the legs of the of the booster when it lands on the uh in the autonomous so uh, uh, whoops Let's see, let me, let me, here we go. Oh, wait, that's, a, there we go. Yeah, this, uh, this photo right here, uh, I took. Look at there, the octagrabber. Yep, the octagrabber. Octagrabber. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I took 
a flight on the uh we have the helicopter here in port it's just it's for tourists um but you can ask the helicopter pilot to do whatever you want and I, and I was like well really i would just want to see the spacex stuff and this was my first time seeing it from the air like this That's and i didn't cool. know they i didn't know they had this i didn't even know what this was okay <laughs> and and <laughs> And I followed SpaceX pretty close. I'd heard of the a thing. There was something rumored called the Roomba, right? You know what a Roomba is, like the little thing that goes around your house and like sweeps up the floor for you, the little robot uh, thing. Oh, uh, see, see. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what people were calling it at the time, but nobody's ever gotten a good look at it. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of got lucky where they were out, they had it out on the deck and I don't know what they were doing, but I got the first clear shot of it. And that's so cool. It, it, it has like a uh, kind of uh, I don't know how to say like a kind of garage for that in mm -hmm. in the in the drone ship. They do. I don't really have a good picture of it, but yeah, at one end of the drone ship, yeah, there's like a garage door. It just kind of opens up like this, and it mm -hmm. and it drives in. Mm -hmm. And I would say I think this line here is going. So it's probably at the other end of it. Um, yeah, so that was kind of my break. And actually, um, after I took this photo, um, Emery Kelly contacted me and said, you know, Hey, that's a really cool photo. And it, I guess he had already picked up on the fact that I had just moved there just because I was so interested in this stuff. Who is that and he Kelly? thought he, Kelly? Emery Kelly. Yeah. Emery Kelly. Uh, he is a reporter for Florida today. Oh. He's the he's like the space reporter for Florida Today. Yeah. And so he he asked if he could do an interview. I guess maybe that would be that would have been my first <laughs> first ever interview. Um, but that that was only a couple months after uh, being here. But it was just like a phone call thing. He just asked me a few questions and then you know wrote a story about it. He thought it was an interesting story. You know, some some dude moves to the Space Coast, you know, and starts taking pictures. Well, they put it on the front page of of florida today wow yeah that was that oh, florida was. today uh, I, I we have to put into context the people florida today is just the local uh newspaper in the space coast so it's just uh and they're uh, actually a subsidiary of in there yeah it is yeah it's a pretty big deal uh and they're a uh, a subsidiary of usa today mm. so and that's like that's one of the bigger newspapers um it wasn't on the front page of USA Today by any means. It was, it was just on on Florida Today. But that you know that was pretty cool, and it, and it made me feel like I'm on the right track. Yeah, at least. definitely. Yeah, I still didn't know how to get my camera out to the launch pad, but you know, uh, so anytime I could, um, and there if there was a Falcon 9 coming in, I'd always go out there and greet the uh, the fleet and take pictures and you know post them wherever. At the time, I think. Uh, I posted more on Instagram than Twitter. Uh, do you and, have you know, a Do you have a mentor or someone who helped you to uh, to show you exactly that, like the right spots to get those pictures or like the path of all those uh, fleet or something like that? Well, sort of. Well, in the early days, um, before Gavin, uh, Gavin is uh, the guy behind SpaceX fleet on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he, he lives over in the UK and he just tracks this stuff. Uh, but before, before he was around, we would, we all just kind of had to use Marine traffic, which is an app that you can have on your phone and you, you learn which tugs, tugboats to, uh, follow and you could see when they're, when they're coming in. And so it, it was, it was actually really difficult. Um, as far as like a mentor, I, th I think, I think the years of kind of teaching myself when I say teaching myself I, I do mean like watching YouTube videos on like what you know how camera settings work and stuff like that like there's no shame in getting online and letting someone just teach you you know through YouTube mm -hmm. um, but I think I'd learned enough that I could look at a photo and at least understand how it was done um, and, and try to learn something about composition. Like uh, composition is the thing that you kind of, you almost have to be born with in a way. Like you, or, or you, I think you can develop it actually. I, I don't think you have to be born with it. Cause I, I don't, I, it's not like I started out knowing how to frame up a shot, but um, 
it's a little harder to learn that because that's something that's on the fly. Like, cause you're, you know, when you, you see a photo that you're like, oh, I want to take a photo like that. Mm -hmm. You don't really mean you want to take that photo again. You want to take a, a great photo that's, you know, well composed and, and is exposed well and, you know, has, you know, use the right settings and then is edited well and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I just kind of learned how to look at at people like John Krause and, and Richard Engel and, you know, Michael Seeley and Marcus, uh, what's his last name? Marcus Coates, I think. Um, there's, there's so many great photographers around here. And, and, you know, you can look at their stuff and be like, oh, that's what a great photo looks like. And you just kind of mm -hmm. learn from, learn from example, you know, you, you yeah. see, you see the great people and, you know, I, I think it helps to have that base knowledge you know, mm -hmm. to understand what shutter speed and aperture and ISO. And I'm not saying I can look at a photo and and tell you what the settings were for, for a photo, because honestly, you know, you can take a photo with a shutter speed that's too fast and ends up being a dark photo, but you could take it into Lightroom and bring the exposure up. And so you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to know. Although John Kraus, he's done that to me before he's like let me guess your settings on that and, and then he'll do it <laughs> and i'm like how do you do that how do you know it, like trevor malman he, he he'll just spout off you know somebody be like ah so you know what do you think what's some good settings for this you just like bam 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 you know shutter speed aperture iso oh, told you so. yeah not me oh, and I, I've, I've witnessed him do that like someone was at because it was like because like night night shots are, are tough like night lift off shots you know mm -hmm. if you're even if you're out there and you are media you don't always you're like okay so it's really dark right now but that rocket's gonna light up and everything changes during the day it's a little bit different because you can look you know you can just focus your camera on the launch pad with the rocket there and set your settings accordingly and not much is going to change yeah the engine or the the exhaust is going to be super bright mm -hmm. but that's okay you know you're going to be well exposed for the entire image but at night, it's a little bit different. It's a little more difficult. Uh huh. I, um, I think at night is much better than during the day. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, it I know looks that better. happens to be. That happens to be because uh, I don't know. I, I still feeling frustrated when I take in the pictures during the day because when I see the pictures at the end, I say I notice that oh no, this is not what I what I really wanted. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I have never get that shot where I say, well, that's the picture I really want. <laughs> so yeah. well, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, and a lot of it's knowing like where you went wrong. You know what I mean? Like um, it could be, you know, it's, I think maybe sometimes people make a mistake. They see, oh, it's it's blurry. Oh, I must have been out of focus. Maybe not it could have been that your shutter speed was too slow mm. and because the rocket's going up and if your shutter speed is too slow then it's going to get blurry right mm -hmm. um i don't know are we going too deep into photography do, do the do they <laughs> you know do, they, do, they, do the listeners really want to know like about shutter speeds and stuff um so let's see. So at some point, you know, I've made friends along the way, you know, and, and I guess it just kind of happens that if if you take decent pictures and get noticed, especially on Twitter, you know, the a lot of the space fans, they kind of live on, on Twitter, you know, we're, we're, you know, Facebook and Instagram and stuff. But I find that everybody kind of congregates on Twitter. And if you start to make a name for yourself on Twitter, well, that's just good. It, you know, it, you put put photos out there, people see it, they know who you are. And at some point, my friend, uh, John Galed, who is actually a, um, he's like a photographer and, and uh, cameraman for Channel 9, uh, he told me how to apply for, to, you know, to be considered media by the 45th Space Wing. And for people that don't know, the 45th Space Wing is the wing of the Air Force at the time, it's the Space Force now but they kind of govern activities here at the Cape um, and also down at Patrick Air Force or Patrick Space Force Base, mm -hmm. uh, which is just a little bit south from here. Um, but anyway, you know, they have like a, a, a media person. And at the time uh, it was Jim Williams and mm -hmm. and uh, it changed, uh, they changed it, right? Yeah, Jim. Another Jim, person now. Yeah, Jim has a different job. Um, he's not too far away, but over in Orlando or something now. Um, but anyway, uh, 
John helped me figure out how to apply. And so I applied and to my surprise, I couldn't believe it. I was approved. And when I first, when I talked to Jim, I was, I was like, Hey, you know, thank you. I appreciate it. And he's like, I, you know, I'd seen you, I'd seen your work and you know, I, I could tell you were dedicated. And, and in my mind, it was a matter of time. Like he wasn't going to like reach out to me and be like, Hey, you need to apply. But he was like, I knew that at some point you were probably going to apply and I was ready to give you that shot. Um, and so, that, you know, that was kind of neat, you know, it's just like, there's people help you out along the way, you know, mm -hmm. um, cause you don't always know. And, and I think I've, I've learned a lot about embarking on a goal, even though you don't necessarily know how to get there. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Frodo in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like he knew that he had to get <laughs> to Mordor. He didn't know how to get there, he just, but he knew kind of the direction it was in and he just had to, you know, start walking. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's like everything in life, right? You, when you find the right people that can guide you, well, it's like a blessing. It's very nice. But mm -hmm. sometimes you can find the, the other side of the people that Oh, why do I have to reveal my secrets? So it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. And there are some, you, have to deal you know, with that. yeah, there, there are, uh, there's kind of a fine line, you know, like, um, it's, it's kind of that, you know, you can give someone a fish and feed them for a day, or you could teach them how to fish and feed them for a lifetime. You know, do you want to just tell everybody, well, this is how it's done. Um, and at the same time, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, photographers see the the how to as like, that's their bread and butter. Like, I know how to do this and you don't. And that's how, you know, because we've got a few, like, I think people probably get a, a misconception that we're all like getting paid and we're all like full time. It's not the case. There's only a couple of photographers out there that are full time. Mm -hmm. um, John Kraus, Trevor Malman. I don't know Richard Richard Angle is full time. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a couple others. You got the uh, you know Cosmic Perspective. God, they are so talented. You know, um, uh, what, what, I'm blanking on their names right now. Um, Mary Liz and uh, Ryan. Uh, yeah, there's a few of them out there, but most of us are uh, most of us are not full time. Um, but you you know you, you just you kind of set your sights and just start marching in that that sort of direction you know mm -hmm. and and if you're if you're doing a good job if you're progressing then i think things would just kind of just kind of happen you know mm -hmm. and uh, the other part is um try to have a good attitude towards everybody that you meet because you never know uh, who who exactly. you're talking to <laughs> and, and and i'll tell you like uh, i remember the first time i met julia like a lot of a, a lot of your uh, listeners Ber how do you pronounce that Ber bergeron bergeron yep, mm -hmm. yep. bergeron yep. in spanish julia in spanish is julia bergeron oh okay bergeron yeah okay She's um not <laughs> wonderful yeah wonderful human uh, being yeah i i remember the first time i ever met her i was i was in a conversation with somebody and i think we're talking like this was early days of like Falcon nine recovery and reuse. And, um, only a few had ever been brought in, I think. And we like, a lot of us like to sit out there and just kind of watch the process of, you know, how they, you know, take the legs off or, or, you know, whatever. And some of us were like speculating about something. And then someone piped in with this, uh, with knowledge like with this like they knew what they were talking about and i was like who is this you know, who is this like i've never i've never met you before and she she just she spoke with authority she knew what she was talking about she knew all about the boats and and how how all this stuff worked you know um and so and and i and i don't even think i really understood who she was that day and it was later on and i was like oh Julia. Well, I'm glad I was nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> 
But so, that kind of goes to everybody. Uh, let's put into context the, the people. So Julia Bergeron is mm -hmm. uh, is is part of your team, right? In NASA right. space flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so she's basically a photographer in there, or what? She's else? a yeah. She's a photographer, and she's also sort of like our fleet master. Mm. Like she knows a lot about the stuff that goes on in the port. I mean, she knows the lingo. Um, she you know may or may not have uh, she may or may not be friends with some of the people that actually work over there you know like she she has more understanding than she's even willing to let you know you know what I mean like she she a lot of times knows things that she can't tell you you know um, but it, internally in the NASA space flight team like we look to her to kind of help us with with speculations or like you know what's the progress on the fleet like she's got the ac access to be able to track the fleet just about anywhere as long as they have their tracker on like she could tell us where they're at and when to expect them back sort of like what gavin does but without having to bug him you know and um and she's a lot closer and you know it's just it's it's like having your friend right here that knows all the stuff that you need to know and she's just super willing to tell you and she likes to teach uh, you know people she's one of the best people to talk to in the port because she just loves to teach people about it you know like mm -hmm. if you ever if, if you ever just you know watch her when she meets someone who like it's their first time seeing uh seeing a falcon 9 up close you know she'll she'll just there you go there you go julia just have at it teach them everything you know um yeah she's wonderful so uh, that's a great example of you know just be cool with everybody that yeah. you meet you know but don't the wonderful people you find on the way mm -hmm. she's yeah. one uh, I don't, and actually I don't she had a lot to do person. oh sorry what i don't know her in person but uh um i text her uh someday in, in, on facebook because I, okay i follow very close all mm -hmm. about the, the spacex fleet mm -hmm. i have seen a lot of her pictures and yeah it's uh, it's very nice, it's very nice. yeah mm. um yeah oh yeah I was, I was gonna say she actually had a lot to do with uh me being invited to join nasa space flight mm. because uh she had uh joined them a, like a year or or maybe a year and a half prior to me i'm not exactly sure on the timeline um but uh and and i I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that it had a little bit to do with the pandemic because NASA space flight has a lot of photographers, mm -hmm. but during the pandemic, they can't all travel to the space coast. And so, um, you know, we were talking and, you know, she was like, you know, we might could use another photographer. And then she talked to Chris G about it. And Chris G was like, Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and so he, you know, he called me, I think, I think it was probably like a month or two after that conversation. Like I was, I was so stoked. She's like, yeah, I, I talked to, I talked to Chris about it. And I, th you know, I think, I think he'd like to invite you on board, but I didn't hear anything for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he calls me one day and, and he invites me aboard and I'm like, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and I, and I, I kept comparing it to, because, you know, like I said, I used to be in a band and I'm like, you don't understand what this is like for me. This is like being in a, a rock band and getting like a major record deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I've looked up to NASA space flight since I was in, in Tennessee, you know, like NASA space flight, even before they had their YouTube and all that, they were my go-to and Chris G specifically, like I'd watch those NASA briefings after a launch and always looked forward to whatever Chris G had to say, mm -hmm. you know, if he, it, like it, when the camera pointed to him and, and I heard him asking a question, I know it's going to be good, mm -hmm. you know, and same with, you know, like Ken Kramer and Emery Kelly, you know, some of these people. Um, so to have him inviting me onto the team, that was, no that was unreal yeah. i mean it was like um it's probably it's probably as close to like when an astronaut gets the call that they're gonna they're getting on a flight you know what yeah, i mean yeah. it's like uh -huh. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess and you know it, it all happened it, it kind of just the right time just you know everything just not not too fast you know i 
uh, I tell like my friends like uh, over in, in Next Horizons, you know, I was shooting for Next Horizon space flight for a while. And, and I'd talk to Matt about the long game, you know, always, you know, play the long game because you don't want things to happen too fast. You, you know, you like, for instance, I got invited to be a part of NASA space flight, but I didn't feel like I was in over my head. I, I I had enough experience built up that I felt pretty confident that I just needed to keep doing what I was doing, just take photos and obviously always try to improve. Mm -hmm. But I felt like what I was doing right now, I was I was good. You know, I, I didn't like my first time out shooting for him. I wasn't super nervous. I mean, the only nervousness I had was, well, sometimes there's a launch and you don't really get anything good it happens you know even you know even for the the seasoned photographers sometimes like you know you, you've got your pad cameras you might have two cameras set out and neither of them fire or your your exposure was all wrong uh, you know or, or something like that and then like you've got you know you're shooting the launch itself you know from a handheld camera and you're just not happy with any of them that does happen so i guess i that was the only bit of nervousness i guess when i when i first started shooting for him um but really it's just you know it's like just keep doing like the past few years was all preparation for that uh-huh you know? i guess okay uh let's talk about a little bit of your pictures uh, I'm, okay i'm looking at a very nice picture behind you is that yours yeah yeah that's that's uh, perseverance. I was looking through something to use as a, as a background. I was like, oh, why not perseverance? Because uh, yeah, this is the mock-up that they had um, prior to the perseverance launch. I'll get out of the way for a second here. Oh, um, yeah, that's a cool that thing. Was is, the, at the Kennedy big. Space Center, right? Yep. Yeah, that was right there in the press site. If if you could turn this camera, oh, wait, let's see. If you could turn this camera that way, you would see the VAB. It would be okay. sitting right there. Um, th that let's see where, where am I at here this right there that's the launch pad and that's Atlas 5 sitting right there on the pad um, but yeah let's let's go through some of my favorites of course there's that one um, yeah this is oh. yeah this is like one of my early ones this was from uh, December 16th 2019 uh, this is JC Sad. It's just you know communication satellite. This is uh, kind of a it, it's kind of a standard shot for um, for Slick Forty, which is where uh, one of the pads that Fal Falcon Nine launches from. Uh -huh. um, but I just really like the way it turned out, and and in fact, sometimes I kind of do the same shot again. I've done this shot you know multiple times. Like I'm not sure what to do here. I just I'll just kind of do this one, you know, kind of you set it up with the rocket on the right side. You know that there's going to be a plume on the left side. And wow, um, but it's awesome. Look at it's, the, yeah, clouds, it's... The, the smoke and everything, the shade, the shadows in there. Wow, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And and the one that kind of took me a minute to figure out is doing <laughs> these. Like doing wow. engine shots is yeah. not easy. And and this is this is where like a lot of photographers will they'll just like I don't want to say out loud what the settings are because it's a very difficult thing to do. You it takes several launches to dial this in. You know, it, it took me quite a few. Like I, I'll tell you when we're off the air, but <laughs> it's not the kind of thing you you broadcast uh -huh. um because it's such it's it's kind of like you know, it's like something that I've figured out. It, it took me a long time to figure out exactly how to do this. Wow. And and to get that exposure just right where there's, I, I don't think there's any part of this that's blown out. Maybe a little bit right here, but you can see detail in all of the exhaust from the booster and from the, uh, from the liquid engines. Uh -huh. And that's difficult because these these solid rocket boosters they burn real real bright a lot brighter and and these burn bright too these are the rd180 engine or it's it's actually one engine even though it has two nozzles but um let's see if i can yeah, zoom in a little bit um these are pretty bright too but not nearly as bright as the solid rocket boosters mm -hmm. um so dialing that in is um is really difficult 
but you know and then you've also got the framing to think about you know um i wonder if i wonder if your uh audience knows how this is done like uh -huh. because clearly i'm not there at the launch pad when this is happening uh-huh no, but me, no. If, you, if you can illustrate something about that sure. yeah i have a i have a sound trigger just give me one second uh-huh it's okay well now that perseverance is at the end is in the and uh, in the back so we can uh oh enjoy celebrate very soon that, yeah it's gonna be the 18 very soon it's gonna be landing to mars that's that's it. right yeah thursday at like three something in the afternoon it's our time yeah yeah something like that uh -huh. um okay so this is this is a sound trigger. Oh, here, maybe I should uh, Miles. stop. Yeah. Can you can you believe that I bought that? Yeah, this and and since I bought it, it's, it keeps in my back. Yeah, but it's awesome. You never you never used it. No, I don't. Um, have yeah, so you, chance to do that. Let's see. I don't know. Anyway, maybe with, with some lightning, lightning. Oh yeah, actually, it works great for lightning. Mm -hmm. I, I've only used it one time for lightning. I was like, oh wow, this is great. <laughs> um, but anyway, for for those that don't know, this is a well it's a sound trigger in addition to many other things and you take this part here and you plug it into your camera here and it's it works as a shutter and when this hears something loud like say a rocket taking off then it wakes up your camera and tells it to start taking pictures at whatever settings you've set you have to you have to understand your manual settings your shutter speed your aperture your iso and it just starts taking pictures at those settings mm -hmm. of course you have to focus it uh focus the camera before you leave it frame it excuse me frame it all up um and then hope that you got something good when you come back yeah <laughs> but yeah that's how that works uh let's see have you had any 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 bad experience about your camera when you have everything set up in there uh just your camera very covered from water and everything and then end up that nothing happened i've been very here? i've been very lucky i've had water in the box that i use mm -hmm. um I've, I've had water pour out of it whenever i pick it up um but not not too much um i i made a smart decision before I set up my first one and I put holes in the bottom of the box mm. so that if any water does get in, it at least has somewhere to go. No, okay. Um, now, I've probably got a little bit of moisture floating around in a couple of my lenses. Uh, I've, I've definitely picked up my cameras and seen just like a few water droplets on the inside of the lens, uh -huh. but I've, I've managed to be able to dry that out without having to take it apart. Uh -huh. um, my two, actually my two pad cameras uh they both are having the same issue where like they've got this they've got this screen that flips out you know and you know you should be able to flip it and and rotate it whatever way you want and the screen doesn't like to flip itself like the the image that i see like sometimes maybe i can demonstrate it um yeah it's actually upside down right now yeah look <laughs> See, like everything's upside down on it. I don't know if you can really see it, but no, it's the bright. Yeah. So yeah, so the whole display is upside down on here. Um, mm -hmm. but that's just kind of, you know, these cameras have been through a lot, and that's I chalk it up to that. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but they still take pictures, you know. Yeah. And and I don't see any degradation in that. So I I, well, I'm I noticed to... that you don't miss any any lounge, right? You are in all of them. Yeah, I, I try to be, and, and I'm also lucky. I've got a boss that is uh, very understanding of, of what I'm doing, you know, and, and how this is my passion. And um, and anytime, there, in fact, every every weekend before she makes the schedule, uh, she gets with me and is like, okay, so what's coming up next week? You know, what do you need? And, and you know, I always, I always try to just take like two days off, sometimes three days off. Um, and it kind of changes up, you know, because as i'm sure a lot of people understand uh, launches scrub things don't always happen right on schedule um but yeah i've, I've i'm kind of lucky in that sense that I, i've got i've got a boss that understands and tries to work with me and um 
and a couple other people at work that I can call on like, hey, do you want to switch shifts or, you know, it is, it's like, it's like every week always trying to kind of balance, you know, get all my hours in at work and then also cover this stuff. Are you working um, in the world of pictures and your daily? No, no, I deliver pizza in my daily life. <laughs> so the hungry people of Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral, they, they know me well. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, the only money I make off of uh, photography is the occasional print sale on, on the website, which mm -hmm. is right right up here, spacecoaststeve.com. Space uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, uh, this is, I get it's just one of my favorites because it was timed in such a way that the sun had just gone down. Uh -huh. So you still had a little bit of that twilight yeah. And then, you know, with the contrast of this bright yellow, you know? Wow, yeah. And and actually this one, uh, this was one of those launches that had like a significant window. It had like a like a two or three hour window. Mm -hmm. And the way I lined it up, if it had gone on time, like at the opening of the window, the sun can you see my cursor? I don't I'm not sure if it if it yeah. shows yeah. yeah. The the sun would have been like right here. And I was kind of hoping that it would be um but it it you know these things happen but it still came out you know it's 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 one of my favorites now yeah it's a, it's awesome it's a spectacular thank you yeah the but way the, what, what was the launch what was the the perseverance this was uh i think no. this was in roll 101. Oh, okay it was that one where the patch had like the kind of a lord of the rings look to it uh -huh. right um uh this is uh -huh. This is Falcon 9. This is one of my first uh, engine shots. And, and again, and this is this is all about quick shutters and and really like like high not the the misconception about this is it's not just like dial your exposure as low as it can go because then that can be too low. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a, a balance, you know. Uh, and also the thing that I like to try to do, especially if it's a daytime launch, like this, this was a daytime launch. Mm -hmm. um, I like to expose it. But it was like done or? Uh, this was uh, kind of like, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think it was like middle of the day, like anywhere between like, I don't know, 10 or 11 in the morning to like two or three in the afternoon. like. Um, just judging off of the angle of the sun here, uh, I'm guessing probably like 11 in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's a daytime launch, I try to leave a little bit of wiggle room so that I can see the detail in the flame, but I can also, using Lightroom, bring out the background. Because if, if you saw this photo uh, like straight out of the camera, mm -hmm. you don't really see a whole lot of this. You see you see the flame coming out of the engine, but you don't see all of this, mm -hmm. right? It, it's so you have to you have to use some. It's not it's not really tricky, uh, but you kind of got to find a balance when you're editing. Like you want to bring up the shadows, but not too much. In fact, you know, I'm looking at this right now and I can see like a little bit of noise in here, uh -huh. but it's it's kind of something that you just kind of accept, you know? Yeah. I mean, the the most important thing of, of the picture is neat. So yeah. it's awesome. And then let's see, I think, yeah, this is. Oh, I that's, think, that's my favorite picture. This is mine too. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is still, awesome. uh, I took this uh, actually about a, about a year ago. It was uh, yeah. January 6th of last year. And, and I'll be honest, when I was, when I showed up here and was starting to set up, I really wasn't sure how this was going to turn out because um, uh, truth be told, I wanted to be able to find an angle where I didn't have this railing here. Um, but the way that it was laid out, I just I couldn't. And there's like this there's a street light that's like up here off to the to the left here. Uh -huh. And, you know, there were things about it that as I was shooting it, I, I was like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I, I'm noticing something is. It's a composition. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Two pictures in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, because uh, I, it's I, I'm looking like the 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 star. Um, 
the star trails yeah the it's star actually it's like it, more is longer than rather than 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 the position of the movement of the rocket right and and actually people might find this interesting how this is done uh this is actually hundreds of photos uh i got there it, this is uh this is the max brewer bridge and there's this little like restaurant bar kind of thing like right uh just on like the the north kind of west side of the bridge mm -hmm. i can't remember what it's called it's like pier something i don't know i have never gone there yeah um it was my first time there i didn't even realize there was a restaurant there um, uh, i want to ask you something how do you notice that uh the arch is going to be like right in that position because uh, that happened to me that sometimes I take the picture to the art, but I'm trying to take the picture to where I guess the art is going to be. And mm -hmm. it ends up to be like the other side. So, oh, oh OK, OK. Uh, how do you how how precise is that? How how can you notice what's the the way, the correct way to take it? Uh, there there's a couple ways. Uh, the free way is to look at the hazard zones. They they put out a map for every launch that has the hazard area. And the hazard area is always gonna be in the direction of the launch. So you can at least know it's going northeast or it's going east or it's going you know southeast. It's always going east. From here, it's always going east somewhere. Well, actually, I guess now we've had a couple that have just gone south. Um, but that's that's kind of like the base way there. There's uh, there's a guy named uh, Declan Murphy, I think, and he created a website called flightclub.io. That's flight club, not fight club, uh, <laughs> flightclub.io. And uh, he he does all, all kinds of things with it. Like he he predicts trajectories and and uh, what he what he did was he made it where if you pay, you have to you have to be a patron because this is a very difficult thing to put together. It doesn't, you know, it didn't come together overnight. But if you become a patron at a certain dollar level, I think it's $15 a month, uh, you get access to his photographer kit where you can put in your coordinates. So you can use Google map on your phone and you can drop a pin on a spot where you plan on being. And, it, and Google maps will give you those coordinates. You go on his website, you type in those coordinates. You can also, tell them what kind of camera you're using, what kind of lens you're using, and it will show you a line against the background stars uh -huh. of where that streak is going to go. Oh, and so that's that's what a lot of photographers use. Um, now, I'll be honest, I am a patron, but I don't always check it um, because I have this lens. It's a it's an eight millimeter lens, which is actually really wide. Um, maybe a little too wide when, uh, like after a while of owning it, I, I was like, maybe I went a little too wide on this lens. Cause a lot of people use like, like 10 millimeter, maybe like 12 meter, millimeter. I think yeah. 10 millimeter is about the standard, but so, this eight, eight millimeter lens doesn't miss anything. That app is basically like a photo pills. Uh, launches? sort of. Yeah. But for launches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great. So I was going to explain to people that this is hundreds of photos because um, I got there a couple hours before the launch and set my camera up right here on a tripod and just had it shoot just like you do with a time lapse. Just shoot. It was doing like 25 second exposures to to get the stars. And after each one, it would start another one. And it just takes hundreds over the over the course of those hours. It just would just keep on taking them. And you, you take those and you stack them. And you also take, of course, your, your streak and you stack it on there. And there was some masking stuff where like, uh, just to kind of calm some of these waters here, because over the course of a couple hours, you, you can imagine these reflections were kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a simple version, you know, that, like if you zoom in on these stars, I don't think, I just have these pulled up on my web browser, but if you zoomed in on these close enough, you could actually make out the individual stars. Um, but the, the other trick is you must not bump the camera because the whole thing will be ruined. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And then you, uh, you use bulb mode, which is a mode on uh, most cameras uh, where 
you hit the shutter button and it opens the shutter and it's like it replaces your shutter speed it just opens the shutter until you tell it to close it again and that it could be anywhere from a few seconds to hours i mean people have done had like an had hours long exposures and and that's another way to catch star trails it's just you can't do that in a place where there's a lot of light because it'll end up just overexposing the image so you end up needing to do like a bunch of individual images and then stack them together and then uh, yeah that's how that works oh that's great it's awesome definitely i'm just a, a super fan of that picture yeah i love it it's it's still my pinned tweet on my profile like i haven't had anything that i feel like is worth replacing it with yeah oh wow. that's great Oh, uh, well, um, Steven? we've gone way over. <laughs> <laughs> we've been going for almost an hour. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I'm enjoying all this moment. Uh, I've been learning a lot of uh, tricks that you you take into account into your pictures. So thank yeah. you for sharing all those uh, uh, secrets with us. And yeah, no problem. You are an awesome photographer. And for sure, you have a very bright career to to go on. And thank you. I wish all your dreams come true, because I know it's not easy to leave your home, your friends and everything behind. Just yeah. pursue your, your dreams. And that's yeah. what you did. And you are doing very well. And uh, you. your work uh, uh, talks for you. So uh, it shows uh, how wonderful you are, how professional you are with your pictures. And for sure, uh, everyone wants to have you in, in, in their companies or something like that to work with them. Yeah. And I know uh, you're going to be just escalating more and more in this, <laughs> in this world of pictures. Well, thank you very much. Of photography. Okay, Steven, thank you so much. Uh, you want to say something to our uh, well, commun Latin, America, Latin American community? Uh, yeah, what's, what's, it's called uh, Alguien que me explique. Alguien que me explique. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, thank you all for being interested. Um, I hope you enjoy the photos. It's it's really cool to take them. Actually, uh, a friend of mine that I work with asked me the other day, uh, so do you go out there to take photos or just because it's cool? I said, <laughs> yes. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I love that people love this stuff because I think it's awesome. And, you know, I, I, I do, I try to make the photos be good, but to me, it's, it's, it's kind of hard not to, because the, the stuff is so neat on its own, you know, it, it's just kind of learning how to capture it. And, and I'm, I'm glad that, that, that people are interested in my work and, uh, and the, you know, the space stuff as a whole. Uh -huh, exactly. And you are very lucky to be in the zone where you are. And if you have access to the Kennedy Space Center to all mm -hmm. the, the launch pads, so you're very lucky. So yes, yes uh, well, am. we uh, just uh, we want to uh, still learning about all your work and launches and everything. Thank you very much for being with us. And I hope to see you again in our next opportunity when yeah. you're working i don't know at nasa directly <laughs> nasa so by then you, probably you're not giving more interviews so yeah but i know you're excellent so thank you very much and well uh open skies for you and your photography thank you okay bye 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 um do you have like an intro uh, like what? Welcome to Alguien Que Me Explique. <laughs> Give it the rock sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs>